Hey guys, how's it going? Today we are on the job. I'm going to be taking a look at this Ubiquiti 16-port um, Pro Max switch. I'm going to be unboxing it, setting it up, and installing it. I want to show you guys um, everything you need to know about this switch. This is one of the first switches Ubiquiti released that has ether lighting capabilities, which you may be wondering, what is ether lighting? Well, ether lighting is their new lighting um, setup for ethernet ports, so the ports will light up. You can set them up to light up for different reasons. Um, we'll get into that later, but this is the switch that supports it, and this does have two 10 gig ports and 16, um, possibly two and a half gig ethernet ports. I actually don't remember, um, but we'll take a look at that all in this video, so let's get started. Okay, so here's the switch. Um, this is a rather large box, actually, um, for something that is not rack mounted. This switch is not rack mountable uh, out of the box. You have to purchase a uh, adapter, I think, to basically extend the unit out uh, outwards that way you can put it on a rack let's take a look here at the cables this does seem very heavy so maybe you, it does come with that adapter um, I don't know for a fact but let's take a look at what's in this box right here looks like we've got a power supply actually um, I'm kind of surprised that it doesn't have an integrated power supply uh, although it doesn't necessarily matter like it's still gonna be fine but um, I am surprised that it is not integrated into the device okay so here is the actual switch and now that it's out of the box, you can see how tiny this thing actually is. Uh, this is extremely small. Um, this is compared to like a uh, light port, light eight port switch with PoE. Um, it's rather small. This is an iPhone 15 Pro, so the smaller one, and it's, yeah, it's still <laughs> pretty big on the device. So this is a 210 watt power supply. And one thing to note is this does have PoE++ on a few of these ports. And if you look closely, you'll see this is a two and a half gig marker right here, which means these four ports do support two and a half gigabit per second ethernet, which is really cool because for the application we're using this in uh, at this site, it is going to be very nice to have those two and a half gig ports. So let's boot the switch up and see what happens. So first of all, you can see the ether lighting um, going through the cycle there to uh, uh, turn it on. Um, this is the boot sequence for the ether lighting. So I'm going to plug this into the um, highest port right there. And you'll see even with this connector, it does light up pretty nicely. Um, I don't have any ether lighting cables with me right now, and, and there's none that came with the device, so I can't show you the full ether lighting effect, but even on this connector right here, you can see the light kind of shine through that, and it looks pretty good. As the switch is booting up, I'm gonna pull up Unify over here on this computer, and we'll get this thing adopted. All right, so the switch is now boot up and ready to go. I'm going to plug in the cable. I unplugged it because I had the wrong VLAN tagged in that port, but don't. Don't worry about that. You'll see the ETH lighting is now pulsing to signify that it is connected to a device and it is waiting for setup and adoption. Uh, you'll see on Unify, in a few seconds here, it should show up. Um, right here, we're going to click Adopt Device up in the top right-hand corner and we'll get the device adopted. It's gonna go through a software update as well. One of the biggest reasons, well, actually probably the biggest reason we purchased this switch or the site purchased this switch is because it supports Unify Pro AV mode, which means you'll get the features for Dante and NDI support. This specific place does a lot with um, audio visual stuff and um, Dante audio. So having that support natively on the ethernet ports is going to be sweet. The upstream switches from it do have that capability, but right now it is a, a light 16 port PoE switch that's in this location. So I'm swapping that out for this one. Uh, we'll keep the same amount of ports, but we'll also gain uh, PoE++ as well as 2.5 gig Ethernet uh, and the two fiber uplinks, which is going to be really sweet. So eventually we'll run fiber to this switch to give it 10 gigabits per second up to the rest of the audio network. And that will give us more capabilities in that realm. Okay, so now we are on the computer here. You can see we have the switch adopted and set up. I have to blur out the other devices on here, um, but you can see it shows our parent device as well as our IP address, MAC address, device version, uptime, temperature, and memory usage. We also have a 180 watt PoE power budget, which means 30 watts from the power supply is left over for the switch. If we go to our insights here, there's nothing um, really in here yet. So you can see our system statistics um, and just the update history. If you go to settings here, you'll see that we have our name. We can rename the switch. We have our ether lighting settings, which we're gonna take a look at here in a second. IP address settings with our network override turned on to the virtual network of Unify management, which means it's going to pull an IP from the management network directly. We scroll down, we have global switch settings, which is essentially just telling it, yes, I do want to take in these settings from the rest of the switches. Our STP priority, 8021X control, SNMP location and contact, and our screen settings as well. So we have our brightness, our display rotation, and our night mode settings that automatically turn on and off the screens every single night. Uh, we can also copy an existing device configuration, do a manual firmware update, locate the switch, restart, or remove it from Unify Network. So let's take a look here at the ether lighting. 
you'll see that we have our speed in the network. So essentially you could have it set to, if you set it to network, you have all of your networks here tagged to their own color. And if it is set to that network, you can easily identify it based on the color. If we go to speed, you'll see that it sets the color based on the speed and you can click on this to change the color. So gigabit E is going to be white, 10 gig E is going to be white, two and a half gig is going to be blue and fast ethernet is going to be orangish yellow. We also have breathing mode, which means it, it, it will essentially um, illuminate the light on and off kind of in a pulsing way um, to breathe the light instead of just having it always constantly on. So that's pretty much all for the switch. Let's take a look at the switch again in person and get my final thoughts. All right, so here is the switch in its full glory. It is all set up and it is ready to go. You'll see the ether lighting is pulsing just like we have it set inside of Unify. And yeah, that is about it. Anyways, this switch is um, $400 from Unify site, and you get the four two and a half gig Ethernet ports, 12 gigabit uh, Ethernet ports, and the two SFP 10 gig ports. If we scroll down, you'll see that we do have the Pro 16 rack mount um, option here on Unify site. It is $49, and it essentially puts a spot for the power supply, and it mounts the switch. Using these ports here, uh, right on the side of the switch, you open those up, and then you'll mount your, um, you'll mount the. I guess rack mount option there. So um, yeah, that is kind of what that all looks like. All right, so here's what we were looking at here. We have a switch that is now booting up and this is the old switch that we had. Uh, this one is just the standard 16 port light PoE switch. It does not have Unify Pro AV support, which like I said, is why we are upgrading to this switch uh, as well as the extra 10 gig port is going to be sweet because now we are going to have extra bandwidth available to uh, provide to the devices down here. Um, another note too is that the access point here is actually on this jack right here on port 16 and it does support two and a half gig. The access point nearby here is two and a half gig uh, because it is a U6 enterprise access point. Um, it is currently running off of two one gigabit per second links uh, and that's what fed this one right here on these first two ports but um, eventually we're going to upgrade to the two ten or two one 10 gig fiber link um, for this area. Uh, I'd like to see the switch wall mounted probably up here sometime soon. Um, and um, hopefully that is going to help uh, keep this area tidy. It is an absolute disaster, but that is about all for this video. Thank you for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.